Good evening. We are excited to have you join us for this session on learning recovery. This session will focus on instructional strategies that support students and address the impact of lost instructional time. We know that over the last few years, many of our students and their families experienced loss, illness, economic hardships, trauma, and stress as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. While COVID-19 has touched all students, it has deepened inequities facing students of color, multilingual learners, students with disabilities, LGBTQI plus students, students experiencing homelessness, and other underserved students. These challenges can have a direct impact on student learning and development. The American Rescue Plan provides states, districts, and schools with significant federal resources to implement evidence-based strategies to address the impact of lost instructional time and to meet the social, emotional, mental health, and academic needs of students. There are a number of evidence-based strategies that ARP funds can be used for to support student learning. For example, these include integrating and prioritizing the social, emotional, and academic needs of all students. Research shows that social, emotional, and academic development are each interconnected. Therefore, to improve academic outcomes, schools should tend to each of these areas in an asset-based manner to meet students where they are and build on their knowledge. For example, school districts can consider the implementation of social emotional learning school-wide initiatives, focusing on developing strong relationships, fostering a sense of belonging, creating rigorous and engaging learning environments, and offering integrated support systems, including through, for example, partnering with community-based organizations to expand mental health services or to supplement existing school mental health and integrated support staff. Second, districts can help ensure students are on track for graduation by offering targeted and timely supports. We know that students thrive when they have access to appropriately challenging programs and instructional materials that are aligned to rigorous standards versus remediation. For example, districts can establish an early warning indicator system that tracks attendance, assignment completion, grades, and discipline rates. When viewed at the classroom and student level, data from these early warning and intervention systems can strengthen a school's ability to provide specific and timely interventions. Districts can also support the successful transition of students from key stages, from preschool to elementary school, elementary to middle school, middle to high school, and high school to post-secondary education and career. This can include, for example, summer bridge programs, dual enrollment and early college programs, student advisories, and smaller learning communities. Funds can also be used to support teachers in using high quality diagnostic informative assessments to inform and personalize their instruction. Diagnostic informative assessments can provide information to educators and families on where students are performing relative to their grade level and how students are progressing over time. Assessments and diagnostics can also build educator capacity for evaluating where students are in their learning, identify specific aspects of student understanding, where students may need additional supports, and where students may be ready for more advanced opportunities. ARP funds can also be used to provide students with tailored acceleration opportunities designed to get students on grade level by using evidence-based strategies to help close content and skills gaps as quickly and efficiently as possible. The goal of tailored acceleration is to ensure that all students attain college and career readiness regardless of where they may be starting. Research shows that learning acceleration is an important strategy for advancing equity and that students who experienced acceleration struggled less and learned more than students who started at the same point but experienced remediation instead. To support learning acceleration, schools can provide teachers and staff with high quality and ongoing professional development and coaching, including how to identify content and skills that need to be prioritized, how to design and select instructional strategies, and how to use data to inform instruction. And finally, ARP funds can be used to implement high quality and effective tutoring. The best available evidence suggests that tutoring is most effective when districts use educators as tutors or staff who receive pre-service and ongoing training and professional development, provide frequent sessions, ideally at least three times a week of at least 30 to 50 minutes, and schedule during the school day whenever possible, such as through double blocking or during study hall and flexible periods. Tutoring should be aligned with an evidence-based curriculum that supports in-classroom success for students. You will hear more about these kinds of strategies and practice during the session. And I now have the pleasure of introducing our great presenters, Monica Gant and Kathy Kelly from the Delaware Department of Education and Delaware Strategy to Accelerate Learning, and our friends from Hemet Unified School District in Hemet, California to hear more about literacy approaches. Good evening. My name is Dr. Monica Gant, 
and I am the Associate Secretary of the Academic Support Team for the Delaware Department of Education. I am joined by my colleague, Kathy Kelly, Director of Curriculum, Instruction, and Professional Development for the department. Kathy and her team were instrumental in setting the instructional vision and procuring resources aligned with our approach to ensuring students have equitable access to grade level content through strategic and intentional prioritized instruction that addresses unfinished teaching and learning. This evening, we will share how Delaware strategically utilized the American Rescue Plan funding to provide professional learning for educators and resources for students to support our acceleration to grade level instruction model. This approach begins with the Delaware Department of Education's core belief that we must empower every learner with the highest quality education through shared leadership, innovative practices, and exemplary services to ensure that every learner in the state of Delaware is ready for success in college, career, and life. Our priorities are to engage our stakeholders and partners, implement rigorous standards, instruction and assessments, provide high quality early learning opportunities, ensure equitable access to excellent educators, and maintain safe and healthy environments conducive to learning. This provides the foundation of our instructional vision, where we determine that in order for students to leave school ready for college, career, and life, teachers must provide them with high quality standards aligned instruction every day. And in order for teachers to have the knowledge and skills to provide standards aligned instruction to students, school and district leaders must provide teachers with high quality instructional materials and the necessary job embedded professional learning, coaching, and support to use those materials skillfully. Although the disrupted instruction that occurred during the COVID-19 pandemic posed a threat to our focus on our instructional vision, the DOE remain committed to supporting schools and school systems and providing resources that accelerate students to success in grade level learning. This required a continued focus on shifting the narrative through an action-oriented growth mindset from learning loss to unfinished teaching and learning and from remediation to accelerating to grade level content. As teachers and leaders across the state began shifting mindsets, we also wanted to define what the concept of acceleration means in Delaware and the important role high quality standards aligned core instruction plays in achieving that vision. Accelerating student learning means ensuring students are accessing grade level content on a regular basis using high quality instructional materials. What it is not is speeding up instruction for students to access content above their grade level. Through the Opportunity Myth research conducted by TNTP, we learned that all students need and deserve consistent access to grade level content and that students starting the year below grade level benefit the most from on grade level instruction. Accelerating student learning means ensuring students are accessing grade level content on a regular basis using high quality instructional materials. What it is not is speeding up instruction for students to access content above their grade level. Through the Opportunity Myth research conducted by TNTP, we learned that all students need and deserve consistent access to grade level content and that students starting the year below grade level benefit the most from on grade level instruction. Acceleration is an approach to teaching and instructional planning that supports students' access to grade level content and core instruction for every student every day in their classroom. And it is grounded in content-specific research-based instructional practice. To clearly articulate ways in which learning acceleration can be achieved, the Delaware strategy to accelerate learning is based on four core actions. First, adopt and use high quality instructional materials. Our state strategy to accelerate learning calls out high quality instructional materials as one of the key components in addressing unfinished learning from the 2021 school year. This is because high quality instructional materials supports teachers in understanding and identifying students' unfinished learning from the previous year, offer clear supports for teachers in supporting students' diverse learning needs, and create a clear and consistent structure for teachers to be able to collaboratively plan for the needs of their students. 
Second, provide educators with initial and ongoing professional learning needed to provide tier one instruction to all students, including understanding how to diagnose and address student learning needs. Third, implement a balanced assessment system, which includes formatives and summatives and leverage data that supports teachers in diagnosing unfinished learning so that the teacher can provide the necessary scaffolds to ensure all students have access to grade level content. And fourth, encourage districts and charter schools to re-examine and create support structures to accelerate student learning within the context of high quality instructional materials, revisiting summer learning programs, extended school day and school year approaches, high dosage, tutoring, and refining or revising existing policies, procedures, and programs that may underline learning acceleration efforts. The four core actions of using high quality instructional materials, providing professional learning, leveraging data, and creating support structures are supported by key components of the Delaware Strategy to Learn Accelerate Learning Plan. The coherence and consistency offered by the adoption and use of high quality instructional materials supports student voice and social emotional learning through high quality content. Content specific instruction that accelerates all students learning requires initial and ongoing professional learning for both teachers and school leaders. Diagnosing unfinished teaching and learning impacted by a disruptive school year and determining the content that may not have been taught is critical to acceleration and recovery. So leveraging data is essential to ensuring equitable instruction for all students, especially those who have been historically marginalized with special attention to those with the least amount of time to recover, the class of 2021. And strategic assessment of the system structure that supports or undermines learning acceleration requires a re-examination of traditional school systems and structures and purposeful planning with an understanding and emphasis on a growth mindset to ensure all students are met with grade level expectations. Christina Allison, Director of Math Professional Learning at the Achievement Network, notes that unfinished learning refers to any prerequisite knowledge or skills that students need for future work they don't have yet. I prefer unfinished learning because it seems to inspire action rather than focusing on student deficits. Delaware's approach to learning acceleration adopts the same growth mindset, focusing on action inspired by unfinished teaching and learning and serves as our recovery to thriving model to to a thriving model for ensuring equitable access to grade level content for all students. You can access the Delaware strategy for accelerating learning using the QR code on the screen. Kathy Kelly will now share the supports provided by the Delaware Department of Education through the Delaware strategy to accelerate learning. The four core actions and six key components led accelerating learning that provided supports for both teachers and students. Building the educator skill set, along with increasing student access to tier one core instruction, became our goalpost. The American Rescue Plan funding was instrumental in Delaware's ability to secure vendors, professional learning supports, and student-facing services necessary to support an accelerating to grade level instruction model. As a state, we were able to provide professional learning grounded in the use of high quality instructional materials. It was essential to our plan that summer acceleration was connected to tier one core instruction from the prior year. And more importantly, summer acceleration supports were grounded in strategies that set students up for a successful launch to the 21-22 school year. In order to provide equitable access across the state, all students and educators were provided with access to an online text repository that prioritized text from high quality instructional materials that have been adopted across the state. Students were also provided access to Zern's summer boost content designed to prioritize content and set them up for success in grade level content as they approach the new school year. The American Rescue Plan funding allowed us to engage in a high dosage tutoring strategy, supporting students across the state using rigorous materials. And lastly, Delaware provided access to language lines so parents and schools could communicate more seamlessly 
about student needs while minimizing language barriers. Over the eight week period, over 6,500 students received acceleration supports using high quality instructional materials. 600 educators received training on how to use their high quality materials to accelerate to grade level instruction. Students spent nearly 9,000 hours reading grade level knowledge building text. These numbers represent a portion of the students and educators captured in Delaware Department of Education provided professional learning and services, but may not capture all of those who receive professional learning and services provided by their district or charter school. One of the highlights of Delaware's summer acceleration strategy includes the partnership with community-based organizations. Governor John Carney was passionate about using community-based organizations to reach students whom schools might not otherwise reach over the summer months. Close to 40 partner organizations across the state, including 100% of boys and girls clubs participated. Members from each of these organizations were trained using ZERN or Core Knowledge Language Arts so they could ensure students were receiving equitable access to high quality instructional materials and the same level of supports as students in summer programming in district and charters around the state. As we mentioned earlier, one of the supports for families in their native language using language lines was a key communication strategy. In just the eight week period over the summer, a total of 608 calls were held with families in 17 different languages. As you can see from the quote noted from an educator on the screen, language lines have been a great resource to help the school connect with families in their preferred language, creating a stronger home school connection. This service has continued throughout the year and the number of calls has increased into the thousands. These are family school connections that may not have occurred without this service. Another important com component of the acceleration strategy was increasing educator knowledge and supporting teachers in the right content to accelerate students to grade level learning without falling into a remediation mindset. Professional learning was provided for K-5 teachers grounded in high quality instructional materials aligned to the science of reading. Educators were also provided with professional learning to support the launch and implementation of ZERN math digital content. Comments we heard from, heard from teachers included, learning about the science of reading was the most effective thing I've learned. I have never taught the basics of reading before, but it's important to know in order to help struggling readers. The ZERN training taught me how to create safe space for students to learn and make observations prior to tackling tough math content. Changing educator mindset about how students learn was and still is a core component of the Delaware strategy to accelerate learning. Providing district services to students was a different role for the Delaware Department of Education. The American Rescue Plan funding allowed us to step into this role and model the kinds of things service, the kinds of services we would want to see our districts and charters utilizing moving into the future. The online text repository, Sora from OverDrive, was an important part of student services over the summer. It continues to be an important resource throughout the year and into the summer of 2022. During the summer, students read over 9,000 hours and checked out 20,000 books. These numbers have increased the school year to 135,000 hours of reading and over 350,000 books checked out. Nearly 44,000 Delaware students have accessed this service. Delaware has also partnered with experienced providers to offer high dosage tutoring services in both schools and community-based organizations. One such provider, Back to Basics, was trained in both math and literacy programs that were being used across the state. All students in grades one to eight have access to ZERN, providing them with essential math content. 4,000 students accessed this learning over the summer through schools and community organizations. One student shared, I'm good at math now. I did all the missions. I crushed it. Another high dosage tutoring expert, Reading Assist, supported some of the state's most at need students in the area of literacy, providing one on one reading instruction. Reading Assist has a proven track record in Delaware in supporting students who need it the most. Continued American Rescue Plan funding allowed the state to plan next steps in moving from recovery to thriving as we support Delaware students. And the shift 
and shift the role of providing direct services to educators and students from the state to the districts and charters. As a support agency, we will continue the professional learning to upskill educators in how to shift from remediation to acceleration. We have also worked with national partners and experts to create a summer learning acceleration guidance resource to assist districts and charters in intentionally planning for summer programming, as well as providing one-on-one -on -one technical assistance in an effort to walk side-by-side -side with districts and charters as they provide the highest quality instruction to students. We have released and finalized a request for proposals that procures a list of high quality vendors who can support district and charters in providing targeted support for students during the day, after school, and during summer programming. This resulted in an online interactive vendor guide that was released this month. Teams at the department are working to award the Delaware School Community Learning Programs grants to school districts to provide year-round after-school programming to students through local community partners. Over the last year, we launched the Easy Network to support those using Eureka, Zern, and Engage Mathematics curricula. This network engages teachers and leaders in ensuring equity in the mathematics classroom, building teachers' understanding of math instructional shifts, and providing instructional planning and coach support while maintaining their core curricula as a primary resource for accelerating to grade level learning. We mentioned the request for proposal as a resource to support districts and charters in providing the highest quality instruction and services to educators and students. The Delaware Department of Education conducted a rigorous vetting process to secure the best partners for our schools. There are three components to the Accelerate Learning RFP, which were reflected in an online vendor guide. Part one, Acceleration Support for Educators, includes vendors who provide acceleration professional learning to educators to increase their knowledge in providing successful access to grade level content for students, as well as professional learning for school and district leaders on creating academic plans to accelerate student learning across their systems. Part two consists of an acceleration supports for students, which includes high dosage tutoring and high quality digital math content. And part three consists of continued usage of the online text repository, which prioritizes Delaware's adopted high quality liter literacy instructional materials and provides a wide variety of pleasure reading text for students and families. This resource also provides students and families with a connection to Delaware's public library system. Here you see a sample page of the interactive online vendor guide. This serves as a support to districts and charters through the request for proposals that resulted in this guide, local education agencies can now partner with these rigorously vetted vendors without going through their own procurement process. We've alleviated that step for them in an effort to make the right choice the easy choice. As you've seen on each slide in the presentation, the words and logo Delaware Delivers appears. In the summer of 2021, we launched the hashtag Delaware Delivers to capture the focus on our commitment to equitable access to high quality standards aligned instruction for each student in the state. Delaware Delivers a strategy to accelerate learning informed by four core actions, high quality instructional materials, professional learning, data to address unfinished learning and the necessity of structures to support learning acceleration. Delaware delivers learning acceleration support and resources for students, educators, families, and system leaders. And Delaware delivers an approach to learning recovery grounded in our instructional vision that every student across the state of Delaware leaves school ready for college, career, and life. Thank you for joining us this evening. To learn more about work in Delaware, visit Delaware's online hub for best-in-class instructional, professional learning, and family resources. You can access Digital DE through the website link or QR code on the screen. Thank you and have a nice evening. Thank you for joining us today to hear our district's approach to doing the work differently by using the American Rescue Plan funds to accelerate literacy learning for all, by all. I'm Dr. Lauren Armijo, the Director of Elementary Education for the Hemet Unified School District.
And I'm Kristen Anderson, the Director of Literacy and Intervention TK12. We are excited to be here to share the work that our district is engaging in around literacy. However, we would be unable to truly engage in this work without the commitment and support of our superintendent, Dr. Christy Barrett, and our assistant superintendent of educational services, Tracy Chambers, both of whom could not be here with us today. Our district is located in the small city of Hemet, California, which resides in Riverside County, located in Southern California. We serve approximately 22,000 students from very diverse backgrounds. A significant percentage of our students come from socioeconomically disadvantaged homes, which means they come to us with a high level of need. About 3,500 employees serve the students of Hemet uh, amongst 27 schools with a strong commitment to meeting our district's mission of embrace, educate, empower, every student, every day. In order to truly make our mission a reality, our district has established three district goals. The first goal, teaching and learning, is truly centered around providing a high quality, rigorous education for all students in order to prepare them for college and career. Our second goal, systems of support, embodies the need to provide differentiated levels of support for every student based on their need. And our third goal, culture and climate, focuses on creating a safe, welcoming, and caring environment for our students to come to school every day, wanting to be there and engage in the learning that is happening. However, in order to meet these goals, we truly recognize the need to have leaders in our system who demonstrate strong leadership competencies. With that need, Hemet Unified has developed the profile of a leader, inclusive of these seven competencies that come from the work of Kurtman and Follin. Although all seven of these competencies are extremely important for any leader in a system to be successful, one of the competencies we have been most centrally focused on is challenging the status quo. Our district has many needs and our leaders and employees need to be ones who are going to be thinking outside of the box, be willing to take risks and do the work differently. This need to challenge the status quo really comes from our current reality that exists in our Hemet Unified School District. As you can see on the left, Nancy Young developed The Ladder of Reading, in which she, her research showed that about 40% of students will be able to be successful in reading with very broad to minimal instruction. Another 40 to 50% of students will require very explicit, systematic, and sequential instruction in reading. Another 10 to 15% of the students require repetitive systematic instruction to be successful. However, on the right-hand side, you can see from our district data in the fall of 2021, as, me as measured by the reading inventory from our first through 12th graders, we had only 15% of our students reading on grade level. Another 78% of our students were reading below grade level, which truly alerts us to a need to approach the work that we are doing differently and how we are approaching literacy and teaching our students to read. This harsh reality of our data has alerted us to exactly this quote. Our system is perfectly designed to achieve exactly the results it gets. And we are extremely dissatisfied with our reality and the status quo, which means that we needed to take a different approach to doing the work. As we work to take a different approach, we engaged in a strategic partnership with the folks at West Ed. Through the work with West Ed, our intention was to really broaden our understanding and our skill as it relates to the process of continuous improvement. As we began to work with them, we really began to resonate with this picture of an elephant here and that we understood our own part of the puzzle. Um, and we may have understood other parts of the puzzle as we sat in various seats um, over our organization. But in order to really understand the system, we have to be able to understand the perspective of the different users in the system and how their needs are met. So we've engaged in several actions. One of the actions that we've engaged in is by creating a learning line. 
So typically in whole system change, um, we would make changes that affect the entire district or perhaps one portion of our district, for example, all elementary. We focused in um, on getting very specific to understand the root cause. So we've selected one elementary school site. In turn, we looked at one specific grade level. For us, it was first grade. We filtered then down by one specific teacher and even got all the way down to one specific student and what are their needs and how are they being met. It's through this process that we've been able to kind of map our system and get a better understanding of the connectivity or misconnectivity between all of the players and the parts in the way that our system is designed. We learned a lot through this process and have boiled it into three buckets or three categories, um, if you will. The first category is that we are working to design a system and design and implement systems that promote best practices. Next, our focus is on building capacity for teachers and leaders. And finally, we work to measure and monitor student outcomes. We mean it when we say literacy for all, by all, as we let it permeate our system. So diving deeper into designing and implementing practices or systems that promote best practices, um, our cabinet and uh, superintendent was very proactive in determining that we needed to actually have a specific department of literacy. And in that, they designed the role of a director of literacy and intervention to K-12. Those two titles or two descriptions go together intentionally because we know that best first instruction is how we are going to approach the work, but because we are working with diverse learners, we need to be able to have intervention that's interwoven at just the right times for all students. Additionally, we know that um, although a lot of the magic happens in our primary grades in terms of students learning to read, the reality is we have students in secondary schools coming every single day with little to no reading acquisition, and we need educators who can get them there. We have in our system literacy specialists. These folks initially were designed um, at our elementary level to promote best first instruction in tier one. They work alongside the teacher to um, help with the curriculum, to help with instruction, to really help promote equity in our system as we use common routines and strategies. Now, because of the um, American Rescue Plan funds, we've had the opportunity to really expand the way these folks are being used into our secondary schools as well. And we're really excited to have the opportunity to have this tier one coaching and push in support at all of our sites next year. Now, again, although best first instruction is what we are working towards and we'll always be working on, we know that we have a need for tier three intervention. And in our system, all schools have a reading intervention specialist. This person is designed to work with students uh, who are two or more years below grade level and accelerate them um, in a quick manner and get them back into the tier one setting. Again, due to those ARP funds, we have been able to accelerate this and we will now have both an LM, uh, upper uh, reading intervention specialist and a primary reading intervention specialist meeting the needs of all learners. Last, we worked with our labor partners to identify a classified position called a literacy intervention aid. These LEAs work directly with the reading intervention specialist and the literacy intervention specialist to multiply the work that they do, engage and support more students, and really help magnify our efforts in the district. Specifically looking into some of the actions that we've taken with this department and with all of these folks, We've targeted the foundational skills in TK2 classrooms. So we've dedicated 45 minutes a day, and we've leveraged the use of our literacy specialists to help achieve equity in terms of the curriculum that we're using and the instructional supports that we're providing. We can now say that our students are getting explicit instruction in uh, phonological awareness and phonics every single day. In our three through five classrooms, uh, we are working on close reading, and this year is really trying to understand what does that mean, what does that look like, and they're getting the opportunity to see demonstration lessons with their own kids. We will continue to build on and expand this um, throughout the next couple of years. And finally, promoting best first instruction, we are leading on the framework of the gradual release of the responsibility across all grade levels um, in a tier one setting. And again, our specialists are supporting the coaching and implementation of these, these strategies. 
Now we're going to dive deeper into our second bucket of building capacity of teachers and leaders. We need to be very direct in saying that really in order to build the capacity, we first need to focus on building a culture of collective responsibility. And Hemet, that began with our superintendent and school board who decided to focus in on improving literacy outcomes for our students. Then with the work of executive cabinet and departments, the decision was made in, to use Lexile as a means of measuring student outcomes and progress. Lexile is very complex, but it is important for all of our students and staff to take ownership and understand why Lexile is a key component of our system. Our students are now able to speak to their Lexile score, set goals, and work with their teachers to understand why literacy is a key component of our district's focus. By interweaving the theme of every single person in our system having a role in literacy, our intentionality and acceleration of our process and programs has been significant. This level of ownership really has impacted the willingness of our staff to engage in deep professional learning and challenge the status quo. So some of the items that we have been focusing on in order to build the capacity of our teachers and leaders really began earlier this year by conducting a book study on the science of reading with all elementary administrators, literacy specialists, reading specialists, and site coaches. They attended a monthly book study where they were provided with research and shifts that they could make in their instructional practices. All of our school site teams then took this back to their own school site and conducted professional development and coaching in order to inform all of their teachers of the science of reading and shifts that could be made. This basic introduction sparked a large interest among all of our staff. For more. They wanted to learn so much more at such a fast pace that we were able to use American Rescue Plan funds in order to offer letters by Lexia Learning for all certificated staff. We currently have 476 TK through 12 certificated teachers and specialists participating in a two-year rigorous literacy training. These Specialists and teachers come from all walks across this system. We have CTE teachers, psychologists, speech language pathologists, elementary teachers, secondary teachers. We have representation from every grade level and every subject area within this group of teachers and specialists participating in the training. We are very excited about the outcomes we will be seeing from that program. However, we know that providing training to teachers is not enough. And so all certificated management from our superintendent to our site leaders are also required to complete letters for administrators. Through this work, we know that they will then gain the knowledge and skills to help support, lead, and coach our teachers to ensure that the learning infiltrates our system and truly impacts student achievement. Finally, our Human Resource Department has partnered with Alder Graduate School of Education to bring student teachers to our small town of Hemet. The program is unique in that it truly immerses our student teachers in gaining experience in the classroom. All of our student teachers spend four days a week in the classroom with their master teacher planning providing instruction and reflecting on what is occurring in the daily world of education. They then spend the fifth day of the week with their cohort, learning research and theory that then would align to what they are experiencing in the classroom. Through this model, we are providing our student teachers with the professional development and capacity that we would hope every new teacher coming into Hemet and they then are being hired as soon as they finish the program to expand our workforce in our district. All of these actions um, are, are wonderful and it's really important that we are mindful of how we are measuring and monitoring them, of course, through the lens of our student needs. So we have boiled it down to three primary indicators that we are looking at. First, we're looking at college and career readiness, early literacy skills, and teacher capacity. 
So college and career readiness, uh, we assess that by giving a reading inventory six times a year to all students in grades one through 12. This will give us a Lexile score. And with that Lexile score, we have the ability to look at both the student's proficiency as well as their growth over time in between each test administration. In the area of early literacy skills, we know that this is a, a hinge point for students. And so we want to very carefully monitor their level of proficiency and mastery of each of the standards uh, from our California content standards for foundational skills. We administer these assessments four times a year and teachers use them to guide their day-to-day -day instruction as well as create small group um, instruction to reteach and even identify which students may be candidates for tier three intervention. On the area of teacher capacity, we know that teachers are the number one factor for our students' success. And it's important to us to be able to provide all students with an equitable experience. With that understanding, we are using the letters platform to help us get a better understanding of the baseline knowledge of our teachers in the science of reading. Using these assessments gives us great information about what our professional need, development needs are now and in the future. As we go deeper into our college and career readiness and left style, you'll notice that we, again, have been making a very intentional effort for all participants in the system to understand what is Lexile and why does it matter to them. For our students in secondary school, we're tying this very closely into career, college and career readiness. And as they identify potential professions that they're interested in, our counselors and teachers are goal setting with them on what they could do to achieve that in terms of Lexile. In elementary school, our students are setting Lexile growth goals um, and working towards their goals as well. We know that our second grade students um, have had a, a huge um, mountain to climb in terms of the last time they were in school in March of 2020, they had only completed half of their kindergarten year. So from the very beginning, we knew that we needed to concentrate a heavy amount of intervention and support on our second grade students. Using the Lexile measure, we have been blown away by the growth that this particular grade level of students have made in growing over 140 points so far already this year. They are absolutely accelerating their learning and we are very excited with the growth that they're making in terms of getting them back up to where we would want them to be. We look at our early literacy skills as a district because we know that students are learning to read in those grades, TK through two. And so it's very important for us to be as proactive as is possible. We've leveraged our literacy specialists to push into classrooms and support teachers with their day-to-day -day instruction. And the feedback that we are getting is amazing. Teachers are reporting that students are blending earlier than they ever have been. We've noticed a decreased need for tier three intervention and an increased usage of our tier one core adopted curriculum. Again, this is a very big part because this gives us equity across our system as our students are highly transient and move from one school to another. At the time of our second quarter, we had 65% of our students mastering these standards, which is representative of a 20% growth prior to COVID. Finally, as we look to build our teachers' capacity, it's been wonderful to be able to get that baseline of understanding, knowing that our teachers as a whole um, are at about a 59% knowledge base. But what's even better than that is to hear the learning and see how it's transforming not only their classrooms, but their own sense of self-efficacy. Many of our teachers have expressed that they didn't learn how to teach reading in their uh, college preparation programs. And so this is giving them the opportunity to reclaim their role as the expert in their classroom and really be the difference maker for our students. As we continue into future planning, our next steps are clear. We must stay focused on use, using continuous improvement practices to truly determine the root causes of our student literacy needs from the student level perspective. We're going to continue to use funds such as the ARP funds to refine our system to promote and implement best practices, build the capacity of all staff members in Hemet Unified, and continue to monitor and measure our student outcomes. These practices will allow us to accurately gauge our progress and make informed decisions to continue the work in accelerating literacy.
We want to thank you for joining us to hear about our district's approach to doing the work differently. We would love to answer any questions you may have. You may also utilize our contact information on the second slide of the presentation to reach out to us after the summit. We look forward to connecting with you. Thank you again.